Universal Center for Renovation presents Historical Israelites. This is strictly for educational purposes and commentary. A biblical and secular historical literature. So enjoy the video. U N C R Universal Center for Renovation. The Oracle of Delphi said only the Israelites worshiped the true God. This history begins in Greece in Delphi. Delphi in legend previously called Pytho was an ancient sacred precinct in the seat of Pythia, the major oracle who was consulted about important decisions throughout the ancient classical world. The ancient Greeks considered this place the center of the world. In this place is the temple of the Greek god Apollo. And in this painting, we have a priestess of the Greek god Apollo. She is called the Oracle of Delphi. One of the most interesting statements proclaimed by the Oracle of Delphi was the Chaldeans and Jews were the only people who honored a God produced by himself. One point to make of this, or actually two points. First, all the other gods of the nations were planets, stars, men part of nature they were created but the Chaldeans and the Jews their God had no creator and two these Chaldeans and Jews were the same people because the Israelites their forefather Abraham originally was from the land of the Chaldeans. The history of the Israelites, the book of Judith, chapter five, through six to nine, the Apocrypha, King James Version. Verse six, this people are descended of the Chaldeans. The Israelites are descended of the Chaldeans. And they sojourned heretofore in Mesopotamia because they would not follow the gods of their fathers, which were in the land of Chaldea. For they left the way of their ancestors and worshipped the God of heaven, the God whom they knew. So they cast them out from the face of their gods and they fled into Mesopotamia and sojourned there many days. Then their God commanded them to depart from the place where they sojourned and to go into the land of Canaan where they dwelt and were increased with gold and silver and which very much cattle. 
Popery recorded what the oracle said about Israel. Popery was a philosopher. Popery of Tyre, circa 234 to 305 AD, was a Neoplatonic philosopher born in the city of Tyre, Roman Phoenicia, during Roman rule. He wrote original works in the Greek language on a wide variety of topics, ranging from music theory to Homer to vegetarianism. His isagogy, or introduction, an introduction to logic and philosophy, was the standard textbook on logic throughout the Middle Ages. In its Latin and Arabic translation, Popery was and still is also well known for his anti-Christian polemics. Through works such as Philosophy from Oracles and Against the Christians, which was banned by Constantine the Great, he was involved in a controversy with early Christians. Popery, a detail of the tree of Jesse icon, 1535, Susavita Monastery. And you can find the quote from Popery and Anaclipses by Godfrey Higgins, published in 1836. But the oracle of Apollo, preserved by Popery, said that the Chaldeans and Jews, the same people, Israelites, were the only people who honored a God produced by himself. And Eclipses, published in 1836. The Israelites worship the true creator, the true God, not the universe or parts of creation. Romans 11 and 36. For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. God is the creator of the universe. Genesis 1 and 1. Through him and by him, all things are made. Romans 11 and 36. He sustains every living thing. Every living thing is finite and contingent upon his existence. Because of his infinite nature, he is not reliant on anything for his existence. All the other nations believed in many gods. The Jews, the Israelites, believed in one supreme creator. The nations worshipped the things that was created of God. The nations had priests and priestesses to instruct them on the will of the many gods. One such priestess was the Oracle of Delphi. The Oracle of Delphi, the priestess of the Greek god Apollo. Pythia was the name of the high priestess of the temple of Apollo at Delphi. She specifically served as its oracle. It was known as the Oracle of Delphi. Her title was also historically glossed in English as the Pythoness. The Pythia was established at the latest in the 8th century BC. Though some estimates date the shrine to as early as 1400 BC, and was widely credited for her prophecies uttered under divine possession by Apollo. Her prophecies 
was uttered or spoken under divine possession. For further information on the history and nature of the Oracle of Delphi, William Smith, a concise dictionary of the Bible. The Book of Ezekiel, chapter 13, verse 7. Have you not seen false visions and uttered lying divinations when you say, The Lord declares, though I have not spoken? William Smith Dictionary Divination This art of taking an aim of divine matters by human has been universal in all ages and all nations alike, civilized and savage. The first kind of divination was called natural, in which the medium of inspiration was transported from his own individuality and became the passive instrument of supernatural utterance. The medium was inspired by supernatural or possession to utter certain statements. Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 10 to 12 let no one be found among you who sacrifices their son or daughter in the fire, who practices divination or sorcery, interprets omens, engages in witchcraft or casts spells, or who is a medium or spiritualist, or who consults the dead. Anyone who does these things is detestable to the Lord. Because of these same detestable practices, the Lord your God will drive out those nations before you. Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 10 to 12. 